Hello, I'm the Exley Cat, and welcome back to the video. So do you recognize where I'm standing slash floating right now? Well, you probably should, because it's one of the brand new glide maps that came with the latest DLC. It's shrunk, and this is one of the first glide maps they made without the default texture packs. Instead, it uses the plastic textures, which, as you can see, makes everything look just this little bit more cartoony. Anyway, the reason I mention this is because I, whenever I see a map that's made in a non-default textures, I love to change it to the default texture pack and see exactly how much has changed, to see how much it ruins the map, but also, I figured while we're here anyway, why not try and find some secrets, because this map seems to be filled with just a few of them, like behind you, you might not have stuff this, but there's actually a villager poking through the door. I wanted to find more stuff like this while we looked around the map and just find those secrets like that around the place. So that's what I'll be doing in today's video. Hopefully you all do enjoy it. You can like the video if you do because it helps out the channel a lot. And let's know you do like seeing secrets and also like seeing maps ruined. We'll be doing both at the same time in today's video. So hopefully you all do enjoy. Let's get straight into it with the default texture pack now. So this is the default texture pack, and as you can see, pretty much nothing changed actually. One of the things about the plastic texture pack that you might not have known is it's really interchangeable with the default textures. Uh, the same is kind of true with natural, and it means that when you change from natural, you know, from default or the natural to plastic to the other ones, you don't really get many changes. And that means that even though this is the exact same map, and we were clearly in a different texture pack before, as you can tell from the hotbar, not much has actually changed. The villager still looks pretty much the same, and everything else still looks roughly the same stuff. There's no horrifying stuff standing out, which is actually kind of cool in a way. I think that's really great. About about, uh, uh, you know, that's like a good lesson to learn from this, I think. Because uh, although you can see it yourself if you have, uh, you know, more builds, here is a build made up of so many different parts, of so many different blocks, and you can see how all of it looks exactly the same. It just has a slightly less cartoony feel, which is actually a really, again, I think that's a great lesson to learn, and it's the first thing I want to point out. But we're here for secrets also, rather than just seeing stuff destroyed, and I think some of the secrets about this map that I get curious about is, one, what's outside the window, two, what's the general layout that you can't normally uh, see when you're flying around, and three, is there any, like, just, you know, secret stuff lying around? So first of all, as you can see, outside the window, Windows, they don't build the map too much unless you can see it from the map. They generally don't build it, uh, but there is a few, you know, weird exceptions to this one. Or like, again, sometimes you can see stuff, but they build it for no reason. Like, for instance, uh, th this is a section I saw in the map, and I was like, what is going on there? But as you can see, uh, so this is the map you fly through a glide. You go down here, and you kind of just follow things along. And for some reason, uh, you know, where there's this bike, there's this very curious, like, you know, just door place, but you know, like this weird placement here that doesn't actually make sense. Like no rooms in any house looks like this. And it's just a bike followed by two boxes. Why does this part of the room exist? I'm not too sure, but one of the boxes is filled with cobwebs for some reason. They put a lot of effort into placing some cobwebs here, or at least some amount of effort. And it just got me so curious as to what this is going on here. And maybe, you know, this is an American house thing and like, oh yeah, in America we have boxes and boxes and I just don't understand that. But I've never seen something like that before. And I figured why not point out that there's this random little, uh, you know, I guess corner of the room that exists like that. So yeah. Fun little fact, there's a random little corner that you can go to, but you would, wouldn't really ever want to. The second little fun fact I thought was quite interesting is that when you get past this room and you open the door to go to the bedroom, uh, this entire bedroom is actually several sections of the map at once. So this is something that 4 j have actually mentioned before, that they try to use as few chunks as possible. You know, there's like a certain number of chunks limit uh, they limit it to, so it has the best performance possible. So that's a pro tip for, you know, most player maps in general. But I think what's also interesting is that in these chunks, they do so much like, you know, overlapping, and you don't even ne uh, necessarily notice when you're playing the map. So when you play the map, Normally you fly through here, right? And then you go right, and then you come out here, and then you go up through there. And you know, you're doing all this stuff, and you're just thinking about how to survive all that sort of stuff as you go through here. However, this all takes place in the same room. That's right, this one bedroom goes from there to like there, then around there. And I think that's rather cool if you ask me that you go underneath the bed and like you circle around so much. You don't notice it, but it's kind of interesting to me. Also, I really love like there's a bunch of details around the room that you're never going to be able to see normally, but you can actually kind of spot like this. Like, oh yeah, look how great this little creeper wall posting is all. Look, you know, they've got like, a, you know, like an axe, they've got a, st a stone shovel, they've got an iron sword. I kind of like all of this stuff and it's, it's mounted kind of coolly too. Like, again, there was some amount of effort put in here that you'll never usually see, but it's great that we can kind of spot that just here, and uh, yeah, we can spot a few of these things as we go along. But one of the weirdest things to me, I feel like, is if we look inside this chest, so this is a chest made of stained clay, uh, you can actually see, I think it's stained clay anyway, uh, yeah, that's stained clay, it's a chest made of stained clay, and as you can see, on the inside, there was meant to be some redstone mechanism. I have no idea what this is doing here, or what the redstone actually really even does, but for some reason, that redstone is keeping the, uh, you know, like, the chair, you know, the, the blocks of the chest up, and exactly what that was ever going to do, maybe they wanted the chest to open as part of the map or something, I don't even know, but it's one of these weird little parts of the map where it's like, were they developing something to do this? Because I'm not sure what this would even do. But still, it was one of the things that was at some phase in development going to happen. The chest was going to open maybe, which is really, really weird that they'd put that in there and then just, you know, forget about it or just never remove it. And that's a thing you can notice in this chest here. So just bear in mind, this chest had some redstone in it and maybe that changes thing. Maybe it doesn't and maybe it's just a weird little thing, but I figured I'd mention it regardless. Also, a thing you might not have noticed is there is in fact a, you know, Minecraft computer here like there was before 
4. I think there's also maybe an Xbox One here, or maybe it's a PlayStation 4. It's hard to be, to be entirely certain. And then, uh, you know, that, that means that this thing here, which you can in fact fly through, is a PC. So yeah, this is a PC. This actually makes sense that it has redstone in it. And that's what uh, is, that's what is actually going on here. So I thought that was kind of cool. And it's not the only thing that I found interesting, because as we fly through more vents and show off the map as we go along, again, bear in mind, when you get the download copy of this map, which I probably should have addressed earlier, because in case you're curious, getting the download copy of a map is uh, not something most people can do. That's why I'm showing that you around it in today's video. But yeah, if you look around uh, this whole place, as you can see, we just got a bunch of the uh, uh, stuff going on here. And then we see another one of these rooms where it's like one, you know, part of the map leads into another one. And this gets me so curious. Can you just take a shortcut here and not go under the bed? Because you meant to go all the way around here and then you go under the bed, you end up in some pipes and then eventually you end up uh, back over here. So again, you end up at the back here and then you fly over there. Is there some way, like some amazing feat you can do where instead of having to do that, you fly up through here and then you end up on that uh, vent? I imagine there's probably an invisible ceiling, but is there? That wouldn't make too much sense to me. So I'm really curious if you can do that. Also, a thing that I was curious about is like, oh yeah, can you go inside here? You can. It looks like it's the same fish tank from, uh, you know, Shrunk. And I love that they've got all these references to the Shrunk map too. But my favorite thing about this uh, that I haven't mentioned yet is just up here, we have a little cabinet and this cabinet is filled with loads of Minecraft toys. And again, there is no way to ever see these unless you go through the TV and then you fly backwards. But the fact that they put effort into building like a little village house, as you can see, it's cute. It's a perfect recreation. They put effort into building like all these village houses. They put effort into building like a little mob spawner, a little abandoned mine shelf with like a Steve and a Fink toy. And then we've got the end portals here. I just, yeah, it, it's so cool in, in my opinion that they got these little Minecraft toys uh, laying around the place. And uh, yeah, that's just one of the great things about the map in my opinion, that someone just, uh, you know, spent some time building that sort of stuff and you'll never see it normally, but it's a thing you can see like that. Also, a thing that you might not have noticed is the fact that, uh, <laughs> you know, this blue glass right here leads to nothing. It, it's designed to look like this sky out there. And I guess that kind of is, but the blue glass really just kind of, again, it makes it look like it's bluer than it really is. It really is just the edge of a Minecraft map, which is slightly interesting if you ask me. Then we've got the TV here where you fly inside Minecraft, um, which I thought was, uh, again, this is like, I believe, the Minecraft tutorial world. Again, kind of clever little reference with uh, these weird little, like, floating cloud things that I somehow fell through. Did you see that? But anyway, yeah, as you can see, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I really love about this. And I also, uh, I didn't even notice this, but the best block to make clouds out of is in fact snow. There's a lot of block choices um, that as you like fly around, you're like, ah, that's kind of clever. Like the, they made the walls out of concrete powder, I believe, which is, again, I didn't even realize, but concrete powder is a really good one to make walls out of. And it's a thing you might not have otherwise spotted. So again, just a fun little fact about that. And as we fly through the map, there's just more and more of these like tiny little secrets of like, oh yeah, this map uh, part goes over there. Uh, you know, here's a thing that you're not meant to normally see. Like, oh yeah, look, there's an entire shelf just filled with things and uh, yeah it kind of just shows that this map is one that they clearly put like a lot of extra effort into i crashed the game i'm going to so fun fact if you break the ceiling of this map it crashes minecraft <laughs> so i'm going to reload the map and then i'll show you around the edge of it and we'll talk about more of that so I figured since I was reloading the world anyway, I might as well prove my point about the natural texture pack having the same kind of characteristic where it does change your Minecraft world's feel, but you can still keep your builds looking the same and everything will still be roughly the Minecrafty thing. And here you can see the exact same map we just flew through, did all that stuff with, looks pretty much the same, even though we are very much distinctly in a brand new texture pack. So certain things will change, you know, like very, very subtly. And like, again, you can spot the changes. It is definitely different, but it's great in my opinion that if you make a map with the default texture pack or you make it with either one of these two, then it just about holds up in two other texture packs and like, you know, it actually all works and stuff, which is great. And this map is a great proof of that. So I'm actually gonna fly outside the map now and I'll just show you some of the things outside of it, which I found to be quite interesting. The first of which obviously has to be the number of chunks it uses. Again, it's really clever. Like the, they build these maps so you're deliberately using everything to go over and under the stuff from before. And uh, this is one of the best example maps of that because if you look at the actual number of chunks they're using, it really is just like that to the extreme, which again, kind of uh, smart stuff if you ask me. But yeah, as we go uh, through the map and we fly from bit to bit to bit, I wanna just kind of fly uh, near the end so I can show you uh, some of the stuff that's going on here. So I think the natural texture pack is the best way to show off like this end bit, because again, it looks it looks distinctly different and more natural, you could say. But uh, yeah, it, uh, like the, the last the last couple of rooms that I didn't show the secrets for is the kitchen over here, which actually didn't have much. I was surprised, I was like, oh yeah, maybe maybe there's something really cool inside the fridge or something, but no, it seems like they, they had like some plans to make it look real, because it's lit up or stuff, but there's no actual like, because again, if you're curious, like, oh no, that's scared of mobs. They didn't light up the floor, so it's not a mob thing. They did just want the fridge to look lit if somehow you got in here, which I think is kind of interesting. But no, basically, uh, core idea of this uh, map is like, oh yeah, most of it's on display. But every now and then, there was cool little Easter eggs that you could find as you went along. And I thought that was rather cool, personally. However, um, if we fly uh, outside the map, like fully now, uh, you can see that one thing I thought was rather interesting is that they, you know, they built this map uh, using the same schematics thing where they like, they build up and stuff. Um, but then they, uh, they interestingly made this map really high in the sky. They, uh, you know, previous maps have been like slightly in the air because they wanted to have all the height they did but this map ends on like y128 or something which is really really suspiciously quite low 
So like, as you can see, it ends at pretty much the old height limit, which is 100 blocks above the ground. But then also, so as well as being able to see like, oh yeah, they built from the ground and they were gonna do stuff here. And they like kind of, you know, mapped it out on the ground, which is interesting. Uh, there's also a village which existed before. You can very clearly see it existed. Uh, it's somewhere near the spawn, so. Uh, just give me a minute while I find it. But you can see how there's a bunch of stuff where it's like something existed here and they for some reason decided to remove it. Maybe it was for the chunk thing, like, oh yeah, that village takes up some chunks in the world, so they have to load it in and it's a waste of space. Uh, but if you actually look around here, then you'll actually see that there is uh, like a village which existed and then was removed for some uh, suspicious reason. And it just kind of gets me curious. Like, I wonder if that is the chunk thing. I wonder if they know that like people go outside the map and they just don't want it there. Or I wonder what it is, but there, there is a village that you can only see the pathway for. Also though, apparently there's just seven random blocks off, what is that, like, uh, <laughs> gravel? <laughs> right. Gravel strikes again, which, uh, again, see, I mean, it makes me wonder, like, do they know that people are seeing it and this is a cool reference? A part of me likes to believe that, and a part of me really does believe it, because there's just so many things around here where it's like, something something is up there and it makes me ask the questions and I figure I should just point that out. So before we go, um, again, there was a village somewhere around here, but I can't find it now. It's a, it's a big map and it's just the pathways that are left over is my point. Uh, there's one final thing about this map I found really fascinating and that is that instead of just using normal barriers, which uh, the game has in by default where, oh yeah, you have these invisible barriers that is set by the game itself when you load in, uh, this map actually uses something brand new, uh, at least that I've never seen an official 4J build uh, because as you can see, if you go here, there's magic blocks in the way. So these magic blocks are actually, if we use the pick block command, barrier blocks. As you can see, this game genuinely, oh, that's really cool. Uh, as you can see, Minecraft has barrier blocks included in it, which gets me very, oh, very curious. Is there like some missing too? Interesting, they have some missing barrier blocks. But still, uh, the game is using barrier blocks as opposed to just random barriers, which gets me so, so curious. If you're curious, by the way, barrier blocks, um, they only work uh, if you, you can only see them, sorry, if you're holding a barrier block. Otherwise, they're just like blank ground. So as you can see, as I let go of the barrier and I just break through here, so let's just get through the ceiling. Okay, there we go. <laughs> as you can see, the barrier blocks disappear and then they reappear and then they're gonna slowly disappear one by one. And that's just a fun fact you might not have known about barriers. But the fact that 4G are using them to make their real maps, this is such an interesting thing of itself. And I don't know what it means. It makes me think that barrier blocks are coming at some point but maybe not necessarily. But right now, you can pick block barrier blocks and that's something you might not know. So here's me doing it again. Pick block barrier block, pick block barrier block. And uh, yeah, that's something we might see at some point in a future update. I think, uh, you know, like a building based update would definitely have it, but we'll wait and see how that does go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching uh, today's video on, uh, you know, the brand new glide maps. Uh, like it if you did like it, cause it helps out the channel a lot. Let's know you do like uh, this sort of video, share if you really liked it and subscribe if you're new around here, cause I make videos like this one every single day on my channel. And if you subscribe, you'll see them daily on your homepage. Thank you very much for watching.